Hello, I hope you're well. Thanks for joining us for this week's Tiger Bite, the midweek review and preview show of Glasgow Speedway. I'm Derek Smith and delighted to be joined as ever by Speedway star Glasgow correspondent Brian Copeland. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Derek. Good to join you again. <laughs> Indeed, we had a little break last week, Brian, so uh, back at full pelt again this week. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a, a fairly packed show actually to get through this week, um, even though we've not got any action uh, to look forward to. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll bring you all the latest news and uh, views from around the around the country. Good stuff. Let's crack on. So uh, with no with no um, meeting last week, this is the first opportunity we have on behalf of Glasgow Speedway, perhaps, to extend our very best wishes and thoughts to Danny Phillips, who, of course, we all know was involved in a fairly serious track crash at Mildenhall the weekend before last. Uh, Danny's a, a lovely lad, having spoken to him a couple of times and he'd started this season particularly promisingly for the Diamonds and uh, unfortunately, uh, as I say, he's picked up a serious injury. Danny, if you're watching, if someone wants to point this uh, Tiger's Bite episode at you from, from your hospital bed, get well soon, stay strong and please take comfort and strength from all of the messages from the Speedway fraternity. Good luck to you, Dan to, to you Danny. On a much uh, happier note, again on behalf of Glasgow Speedway, we'd like to express and pass on our congratulations to former Tiger Trent Livington and his Glasgow Tiger supporting wife Julie on the birth of their young daughter Matilda in the last couple of days. Congratulations to you both, Trento and Julie, down in Australia. Ryan, there's another big news week uh, off track uh, involving Richard Lawson. It has been, yeah. Uh, our very own Richard Lawson has signed up to uh, to join Somerset and the Premiership, uh, obviously doubling up with the, the Tigers, uh, which I think is a, a move that he's um, very much looking forward to, uh, given that he started the season without a, a club in the top flight. And I know that a lot of the riders um, you know, really want to, to double up to make the this whole thing worthwhile, you know, in terms of making money and, and, and keeping race sharp, it's, it's important to have that, that kind of busy diary. Um, I caught up with Richard a little bit earlier on. He just uh, gave me a few words on um, on his move to Somerset, uh, which he kicks off, I think, tomorrow night um, in a home fixture. He said, I'm really excited to be back in the top league, and Somerset is a great racetrack that I think will only do me good as a rider once I get the track dialed in. Um, you know, he went on to say, I don't want to hang on to the grudge of not starting the season in the top league, uh, but I feel as though the performing British Championship heat leaders should be in the top league in Britain. We really need to start looking after our own. Speedway is an expensive sport and you need both leagues to be able to make it work. I can't wait to get started at Somerset. So um, some interesting words from Richard. I know he's been quite opinionated and, you know, has strong views on the um, the sort of the way that some of the British riders have been have been dealt with um, and perhaps overlooked in favour of some foreign riders for, um, for positions in the, uh, the top league. But... Um, I'm sure Richard uh, will go and make a success of it and um, perhaps prove that he should have been in the top flight in the first place. So um, good luck to Richard. Good luck, Richard. Yeah, a point well made by Richard. And, you know, Richie, of course, also has been very uh, vocal about exactly the same circumstance. But uh, Richard's been given an opportunity and I'm sure you'll seize that with uh, with both hands starting tomorrow night. Yeah, well, Ryan, it was... Uh, I was going to say, speaking of speaking Sorry. of Richie, we'll just mention the fact that uh, he is actually Glasgow's new number one since we were last on air. He's uh, moved into the top slot in the team, um, having uh, the team now been issued with new averages. Um, and actually, Richard Lawson isn't too far behind him. I think he's certainly over nine points, as is Richie. Um, so, testament to the the way they've started the season. Um, it drops a hundred summers bizarrely down into third place, even though he's had a, a storming start to his campaign as well. So, it just shows the real strength that we've got at the top of the team at our moment. Absolutely. Long may that continue. Talking about strength at the top of the team, we weren't able to have a, a hosted tiger bite last week, Brian, which didn't, uh, which robbed us of the opportunity, I guess, to um, to preview the, the derby at, uh, at Edinburgh last Friday, and of course the home fixture against Redcar. Let's now have a, a look back on what turned out to be a highly successful weekend for the Tigers. Um, in the lead up to the to Friday's trip to Armadale, of course, Stuart publicly had expressed um, some confidence that we were going there minimally to bring back a, a league point to Ashfield and uh, in the final event at the final chequered flag it was actually two league points we managed to bring back it was uh, I think we, we both had to watch Mafar on the on the updates and uh, an extremely close match throughout um, I, th I don't think it was ever 
any more than two points the gap between the sides uh, which is not a, is no mean feat at, at Armadale it's not often we go there and uh, and don't see ourselves falling a little bit further behind in that and have to pull things back um, but it's been a little bit of a, a theme of our away matches so far that we've had to pull something out the bag in the last heat and um, Messers, Summers and Worrell duly, duly delivered once again um, and I've seen Heat 15 from that match Um I think our guys did extremely well to get out of that, you know, with a win over uh, Sam Masters, who was uh, looked as though he was a, a man possessed and trying to get that uh, that lead um, in that last heat. But um, fair play to, to Edinburgh as well. They they, they kept battling, um, even though they were up against that, you know, what is a strong Tigers team this year. Um, and, from, and by all accounts, a fair result, but a very good one for us, I think, and the first team to, to take something from Armadale this season. And I don't think there'll be too many who do. I think you're probably right, Brian. You know, we, um, we we know we've started well. You've touched on it. We've taken points from every meeting home and away this season. Edinburgh's forum, we've talked about briefly uh, in, in patches over recent weeks. Obviously unbeaten at home, that goes without saying. But there's a couple of a couple of results which perhaps suggested that they had some vulnerabilities. And if any team were hopefully going to explo- ex- exploit that, it was a Tigers team led by their strong heat leader trio. Yeah, exactly. And of course, with young Dan, young Dan Muley returning to Armadale. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, the good thing was that we, we saw every one of our riders chipping in with, with points, um, crucial points at, at vital times. Um, it was a real team effort. Um, the bizarre thing is that on, on Sunday, Edinburgh really made amends for that by going and, and winning uh, Newcastle. Um, and sorry, they, they got a draw. It was at a last yes. uh, resurgence in Newcastle. I'm, I'm uh, to get a forty-five each draw, um, but I think yeah, young Max Clegg, having dropped down to reserve there, went and scored something like fourteen or fifteen points. So um, it just shows you it's, it's so hard to predict this league. Um, you just can't you just can't foresee what's going to come. Um, and you know Edinburgh might yet look to strengthen up. We just have to wait and see what happens in the coming weeks. So I think to to go there at this stage of the season when you know there's still one or two of our guys who are perhaps to still hit top form mm-hmm. and, and get a draw is, is pretty good going and. It might find a, a tougher task when we get there later in the season. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the, the, I noticed in the summations from uh, both clubs after the dust had settled on Friday night, each team pointed to some uh, some misfortune during the course of a meeting. That's Speedway, that's always going to happen. And uh, perhaps in the end, a, a draw was a fair result. And that's certain. I, I like, tagged on to the, the thumping that Tigers gave Edinburgh a few weeks back at Ashfield. That uh, means the bragging rights at this early point in the season w- will and truly reside in the West of Scotland, I would suggest. I think so, but uh, I don't think we should get too complacent about that. <laughs> They're always on our on our on our tails, so um, I think uh, they will be looking to to put that right later in the season. You know, we could end up facing them a number of times as the as the the campaign progresses. So um, early days in that contest yet, we are certainly ahead at the moment. But um, you know, it's good to see two um, two Scottish teams going head to head um in, in that fashion at the top of the league and um, I'm sure I'm sure they'll continue to be persistent as the as the year progresses. Absolutely, Brian. No doubt about that. And the big travelling support, of course, delighted at uh, witnessing a, a draw at Armadale headed to Ashfield on Saturday night to face what looked like a robust and stern uh, red car side. And and so it proved I think in the end Tigers won reasonably comfortably. The match was determined before the, the final heat, etc. But uh, Redcar, a Ben Barker inspired Redcar, put up quite a bit of resistance. Yeah, I don't think anyone expected Ben to come and lie down, to be honest. Um, he would have had a, a point to prove, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, it's the kind of thing he's capable of, uh, is going out and, and scoring those kind of points. Obviously helped by the, the double, um, the tactical double win, I think, that he got sort of midway through the meeting, um, which certainly helped their cause. So the fact that we still went out and won by, I think, 11 points was the, the margin in the end is, is a good result. Um and I think it just does prove how much of a fortress Ashfield is going to be this season. Um, you know, I think it took till Somerset late last year in the, uh, I think it was the League Cup or the playoffs, one of those two, um, to, to come and beat us. Um, you know, we went on beating at home for that length of time. I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. to see that happening again, if not go a little bit further than that uh, this year. I think we're, you know, our top three in particular are just so strong at home. But um, another good result, I think it's... Um, I, th- I think again we don't want to com- become complacent at home, but we are we are particularly strong around Ashfield, and I think that just shows in the results so mm-hmm. far. And an, an eight plus four re- point return from Tom Perry at reserve, perhaps the standout performance within the home camp. 
Absolutely, and yeah, I caught up with Tom earlier in the week. He's he's in really good spirits. I think he's enjoying his speedway. Um, he feels as though he's now getting dialed into the track. I know he's he's been full of praise again for for Richie Worrell's influence on him, uh, his racing in the last couple of weeks. I think Richie spent a bit more time working with him uh, just before the red car meeting. I think they were in the workshop together, you know, working on clutches and things like that. Great to see Richie getting involved at that kind of level as well, um, and working with his teammates and. It's clearly working for Tom, which is which is good to see as well. And I think we knew when we signed him at the start of the season that he was a man that could come in and, and really push his average up. Um, based on the, the latest averages, I don't think it's actually gone up by much. Um, but I think we'll see the real benefit of that in the next round of averages, um, perhaps just a, a hangover from the end of last season in, in that respect. Um, but mm-hmm. Tom, I think, has proven to be a real asset now. And I think we're starting to see the, the best of him. Wonderful to watch. It's always good to see a young rider flourish in the in the red and white. Ryan, talking about um, Saturday night, let's have a look back now at some of the, the action late on in the meeting. Anderson, Perry, Paul and Lawson off the outside. The red rise takes up and away we go with heat number 14. Lawson moves in from the outside. Jonas V. Anderson moves out and he takes it wide around turns one and two and Lawson could fall to the back here. Richard Hall going through on the inside into third place, so Lawson at the back, it's Anderson who leads the way, Tom Perry having a go for the lead around the outside, all action here in heat number 14 already, now Hall having a go at Perry for second place, the two number 60, Lawson's going to try and sweep underneath both of them coming out of turn two, he's got past Hall, and Perry will let, let him go through to try and attack Jonas V. Anderson, the day who has started off fairly slowly but has got better as the day has gone on, Lawson now through into second place, Nearly clashed with Jonas V. Anderson on the run to the first turn. I thought we were going to see a pile-up, but they uh, survived it. Perry holding on ahead of Richard Hall. Been a busy day for him with his reserve partner, Shelby Rutherford, struggling. Richard Lawson now having a go at uh, Jonas V. Anderson. Can he come from last to first? I don't think he's quite going to do it. Jonas V. Anderson hanging on in front around the final turn. And the Dane just hangs on to win it ahead of Lawson. Perry third at the back. Richard Hall a share on the points then. Means that Glasgow hits 50 points with one race still to go. So well done, Jonas B. Anderson taking the uh, win there after a tough first turn in uh, heat number 14. A three-all is the uh, results. Hello, what's going on here? Looks like we've got a rather frank exchange of views going on between Richard Lawson and uh, Jonas B. Anderson. Well, I hope this doesn't develop into a uh, further altercation here. This is not what we uh, want to see. And Lawson... Oh, turning away there to the cheers of the Glasgow fans. Well, this is what sparked that Anderson moving out and hacking in on the first turn, taking Lawson right to the air fence, and that dropped him to the uh, back of the field. He had to fight his way through to take second place, but Anderson sealing the race there on the first turn. Anderson, the winner of a controversial... How about that, Ryan? Some bit of action on Saturday night. Yep, I think it took a wee while to get going from what I hear, but um, <laughs> it certainly seems to have livened up towards the end there, and um, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, hopefully we see a bit more of that in the in the coming weeks. Um, once we start getting to the the real crunch fixtures against some of the some of the top sides. And those three points gained on Saturday night took the Tigers momentarily, at least, but back to the the summit of the championship. And as you mentioned earlier, Edinburgh snatching a draw at Newcastle on Sunday, then uh, relegated us back down by one point into into second place. So uh, and some big meetings coming up, which we'll preview uh, in next week's Tiger Bite, of course. Yep, that's right. We're obviously away at uh, Sheffield and then home to Peterborough. So um, there's not really, you know, I think other riders and, and management have touched on this already uh, this season, but there aren't really any sort of weak fixtures <laughs> this year. Uh, you know, everyone looks like a potential banana skin or, you know, if you're not on your game, you could go and, go and slip up. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a shame that we've not got something this weekend, but I think once we get into to next week, um, you know, the, the, it really gets going and... Um, yeah, a lot of big, big meetings coming up. Well, and with the absence of any meeting involving the Tigers this weekend, Brian and I took the opportunity, we like to keep things fresh here on Tiger, right? and we took the opportunity to cross the North Sea, not in person, but by uh, by technology at least, and catch up with one of the home heroes of the 2016 season. Here's Brian and I's chat with Rennie Bach. Evening to you. Thanks very much for giving up some of your evening to talk to, to Tiger Bite. So we're going to take a look back at 2016, Rennie, and your, your time as a Glasgow rider. But uh, before we go backwards, let's look 
to the current day. Um, how is your 2017 season? Bring us up to speed with what you went up to, please. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a pretty slow start to the season. The weather hasn't been uh, been the best over here. and um, I've only done two meetings now. Um, I've got a busy week coming up at least, but uh, you know, I've only got the Danish League uh, this year, so, so so far it's been really, really slow with meetings and stuff. So the Danish League with Esberg, is that, your, is that a local side to you, Rene? Yeah, it is. I live like 15 minutes from the track, so that's pretty nice. Do, do some names dropping. Who, who's your, who are your teammates this season? This year we've got uh, Nils Christian Everson and uh, Nikolai Klind and uh, Michael Palmsoff, you know, as well. Um, in the team, so uh, we've got a pretty good uh, good team, and uh, we've been been tipped as the favourites for the league. So uh, it's pretty exciting being part of. And have you started well in your two meetings? Yeah, we we won uh, both meetings, so it's uh, it's been a pretty good start. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a bit different when you're used to doing uh, three or four meetings a week, and then uh, you say May month now, and uh, I've done two meetings, so it's, it's def definitely different to to what I've been used to. Is where you're riding at the moment, Rennie, is that the equivalent to our Elite League or Premiership? Yeah, you know, it's probably a bit a bit like the Elite League, I would say. You know, we've got a, a strong top over here, and then they've done a, a thing so they can keep some of the Danish juniors in the, in the, in the league as well, which is, uh, is pretty good. So um, we've got a fairly fairly strong league, and uh, I think with some of these new rules they've done in Poland, <clears throat> a few of the, the better riders like Nilsson, uh, and then can do more meetings in the Danish league as well. So it's definitely made, uh, made the league a lot much stronger at Denmark. Rennie, you mentioned a quiet start, and, and you only have Esberg uh, uh, with, to offer you a team berth at the moment. Is that through choice? Because we know in the past you've you've ridden in Sweden and Poland as well as the UK. Is it by choice, Rennie? Or? You know, it's a bit of both. Um, I said last year at the, at the dinner dance at Glasgow, I said, you know, there's two teams in England I'll ride for in the, in the Premier League at that time, and uh, that was Newcastle and Glasgow. And uh, I think, you know, I spoke to Stuart and because of the new average rule, it didn't fit in the plans, which was fair enough. But at that time, I'd already told uh, Alan Hetty from Newcastle that Glasgow was my, my first priority. So uh, he obviously moved on to sign some other riders, which is fair enough as well. Um, and I've had a few offers from, from other, other clubs in the, in the Premier League, but I haven't been that interested. You know, uh, I think going anywhere in the... Uh, in England now, it's going to be hard when you've been to a club like uh, like Glasgow where things are so organised and, uh, and professional. In, in terms of priority, would you would you prefer a call from the UK ahead of Sweden, for example, or can't you afford to be that fussy? It's hard, you know. Uh, riding in England is uh, is a bit different because you've got to have two extra bikes and like a lot of extra equipment. And see, if I rode in Sweden and, and Poland, I could probably do the same, uh, like them two leagues and the same two bikes as I have in in Denmark at the minute. Uh, so, you know, if that came up, I would have to think through what uh, what was best for me. When it comes to Sweden and Poland, Rene, have you had any offers to ride there this year or have you decided to set those out? Um, I had a contract pretty much sorted with my with uh, my Swedish club from last year, but uh, like a week before everything was sorted, uh, the, the management decided that they only wanted the uh, Swedes in the, in the team for the season. So that left me with... Uh, not many choices left in Sweden, really, and I haven't had any other offers from Sweden. And, you know, to be honest, of course. In Poland, I've had a few bad experiences there, so I don't really want to go anywhere there, because it's one thing is to go to Poland and get paid a lot of money, but it's another side to get your money as well, and I don't really like waiting around when, you, when you've when you been there to do a job, I think you should, uh, should be paid as well. So, uh, Rene, you're still a young lad. I, if my research is correct, you're just about to turn 27. Still a still a young guy. Do you have ambitions on, a, on an international level? For example, what would Rennie Bach have to do to uh, push his way towards a a Danish world team squad? I think you know too because uh, there's so many uh, like good Danish riders. It, it would definitely mean that I would have to do the the Polish and the Swedish league at least um, to get a, get into that. But um, you know, I, I might still be young, but you know, in a in a speed of world, twenty seven is not that young anymore. So, uh, you know, I got I got to look at what uh, what I want to do with. <laughs> and how has your uh, season started on a personal level, Rennie? How has your scores been? Have you been quite happy with how you've uh, you've started the campaign? Yeah, I mean, I got uh, I got thirteen points in both uh, both meetings, so it's been pretty. Good. But like, I, I, it's it's 
pretty easy to, to feel when you're riding that you're, you're not into that uh, routine that you need to be like you know when you ride in England you you have a meeting on the Sunday and you, you fly back Monday and you have another meeting Tuesday and you know you keep going now it's a bit uh, bit different all the time so it's it's definitely a lot harder to get uh, get into the race here. So, really, am I correct in saying you have some business interest in, in, in Denmark? Does that keep you busy? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've been working the last few seasons. I've been working at this company uh, in Denmark. And then just before the, the season started this year, they, they ended up uh, like buying another company. And uh, they offered me a pretty good job there. So that's what I'm doing at the minute. And uh, I'm quite enjoying that. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit different when it's Friday. You can actually go home and uh, say you have a day. <laughs> I've never tried that before, so that's uh, that's pretty nice. It's nice to hear the nine to five isn't too bad, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all good. right for some. <laughs> You mentioned earlier on we talked about uh, international ambitions, uh, Rene. Um, what about the likes of the, the Grand Prix qualifiers and things? Are, the, are they something you're able to filter into from uh, the level that you're at in, in Denmark? Yeah, we were we were going to do like a, a GP qualifier over here, but... Uh, for a lot of reasons, it got rained off or cold off or, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on about that. So they ended up, like, picking uh, five riders. And uh, as I said, because there's so many good riders, you, you and I, my season down, I wasn't that great last year. You know, there's five riders in front of me. So mm. I got the chance to be the reserve for a full meeting, which wasn't the, the best, but, uh, you know, that's life. Really, you obviously, um, through your through your riding and your, your friendship with other riders, you obviously... Uh, Keep a keep tabs on the, the UK speedway scene. Have you been watching the Tigers progress this season? Yeah, I have, you know, um, I still speak to a few of the riders over there. So, uh, you know, um, but uh, I think uh, even when I when I looked at the teams this year, you know, Glasgow obviously looked like very, a very strong team on paper, and uh, so far, you know, Stuart has uh, has done the right choices. You know, the the riders are performing, and uh, I think you're in for, for a very good season. You mentioned earlier on, Rennie, that you know during the winter you had you had made Glasgow your your first choice club. Um, I think it was quite clear that you wanted to come back, and that was one of the questions that, that one of our fans had for you. Uh, Jack Besto um, had asked, you know, did you want to be a part of the, the Tigers lineup in 2017? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, after the the meeting with the, the BSP, still rang me straight away and said, "Oh, they've changed these things, so uh, we can't fit you in." And, you know, to be honest, it probably took me about four days to just, like, I was a bit uh, I was a bit pissed off, but at the same time, I, pr I understood where I came from, so there's no hard feelings, you know. Um, mm -hmm. He had three uh, free riders that uh, that done, a, like, very good last year as well, so uh, I would probably have done the same if I was in his shoes. Uh, but it took me a few days to, to get over not being in the team. Uh, I left left Glasgow thinking, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to come back next year, you know, but, um, you know, it wasn't to be, but... Uh, you know, never say never. It must be a frustration, Rennie, sometimes because you know, good form, a good run of form, and some good scores obviously raises your your average. But and obviously that is what you that's what you want to do. You want to score points as a rider and earn money as a rider. But uh, the flip side is sometimes that can squeeze you out of team building, can't it, for the following season? Yeah, that's it. You know, but um, but as I said, you know, it would be a lot easier for me to sit here now and then say, oh, you know one of the, the top three riders from Glasgow is not performing, so he should have picked me. But, you know, luckily all three of them are doing, you know, more than what they should. So, uh, you know, fair play to Stuart. he got a very good team built there, and uh, I'm sure they can go all the way. As someone who isn't from the UK, Rennie, what did you think of the changes that were made during the winter that, you know, the, 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 the team limit has, has dropped during the winter, and that's perhaps seen you out of a team place at Glasgow? What were your thoughts on that? I think... Um, they had to do something, I understand that, but at the same time, you know, last year the Premier League was uh, was at a very high level, I would say, and, you know, every time there was a TV meeting, people were, were saying how good the racing was and stuff, so I think they done, they done like a, they had a very good product there, and they, they made it weaker for some, ever, for some reason. I can see that there's a lot of, there's a few more English riders in the league now, which is good, but I still think the, the league is, the level of the league is, is a bit, uh, bit lower now, which is a shame, but... Uh, at the same time, they, most of the clubs in England are, are not making money and, they, you know, they have to do something to try and, and lower the cost and, uh, and make speed better, obviously.
Rainy, tell, tell us a little bit, if you can, describe the, 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 the speed we've seen in Denmark. So you, you've mentioned some of your your teammates at Esberg, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have five, five rider teams over there. Is, is the speed we've seen quite healthy in terms of sponsorship and crowds? Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it depends from club to club. You know, there's uh, two or three clubs in Denmark that pull about uh, between 2,000 and 2,500 people every, every meeting, you know, and uh, luckily my home club pull, uh, pull about 2,500 every meeting, which is, uh, you know, it's always nice to perform in front of a, car, a good, uh, good crowd. Uh, but, you know, I think everywhere in the world, Speedway are struggling with money and, you know, sponsorship as well. And, but hopefully it will get better. You know, last year they, they signed a, a TV contract in Denmark for the Speedway, which is, uh, is very good for, for the sport over here. And uh, hopefully that's going to promote it a lot. When you when you compare what you saw at Glasgow last year um, to what you have over in Denmark, how did the the setup at Glasgow compare? Uh, there's obviously been a lot of work put in at Ashfield. Um, what, the clubs sort of have that sort of level of professionalism over in Denmark. Is there a higher level of professionalism than what you maybe get to, to, for some clubs over here? Yeah, I would say so. You know, it's it's obviously different in Denmark because we only have uh, 15 meetings and the team manager can change the team every you know, every week if you want. So you don't get the same relationship to the club and, and the people around it as you do when you ride in England. And, uh, but, you know, I think with, with Glasgow, obviously, it was from what it was a few years ago to what it is now, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to come there. And, you know, it's uh, the whole thing, as I said, you know, the crowd is getting bigger for, for every meeting over there as well. And, and, you know, it's just, it's nice to see. I know there's been a lot of money and a lot of hours put into it, but, I think it's it's starting to pay off, and it's it's uh, it's nice to see, even though I'm not a not part of it anymore. Certainly, a, certainly a positive story within British Speedway, the, the resurgence, I guess, around around Glasgow. Randy, when you when you think back, if I put you on the spot and ask you to think back to your four or five months as a tiger last year, um, can you pick out any any memories that come first to mind? Yeah, I mean, obviously, winning a winning a trophy at the end was uh, was unreal, you know. Uh, you know, I've won that that trophy before, but it was just different here because there were so many feelings in it, and you could see from from everyone, the riders, the management, the fans, how much it meant to everyone. And I think the way we won it as well was uh, was unbelievable, and uh, you know it, that was just uh, that was something special, and that that is for sure something I'll look back to in a few years as well. That that, that uh, knockout cup win was twenty two years in the waiting, Rainy. Really. It did mean a lot to an awful lot of people around the club. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for a rider that comes from from abroad, you could you could feel that straight away how much it meant, and you know that is uh, that's a really good feeling to be part of that, and uh, you know, then it means means for more for the riders as well. How did you feel? How do you think you managed to build up such a rapport with with the Glasgow fans and the club, despite spending a relatively short time there? It seemed as though you sort of just fitted right in, and you you still have a lot of affection for the club. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was lucky, you know, the, obviously the riders that joined was uh, was some nice lads, you know, and we got on pretty good, so that made things a lot easier for me, you know. It's never nice when you got to come over and replace, replace someone, because there's always people that mean that it's, them changes shouldn't have been done, but, uh, you know, it was just, Glasgow was just a very nice club to, to fit into, and it was, for, for whatever reason, it was just very easy for me to fit in, um, so that was, a, that was really nice. We have a question from, for you, Rennie, from Colin Alexander, a Glasgow fan. And his question is, past or present, which rider would you choose to partner in a Heat, a heat 15 decider and why? Um, it's a tough one. You know, I've always been a big fan of, uh, of Billy Hamill and Greg Hancock. Uh, and I've had the chance to do a, a very important heat with Greg once and, uh, and we pulled off a 5-1, which was, uh, you know, unbelievable. But, uh, you know, it's always nice when you get a chance to ride with some of the, the riders you've looked up to through your, your younger years. Um, but uh, I think last year, you know, I, I really enjoyed riding with uh, Aaron Summers. For, you know, he's a very good uh, he's a very good team rider and he looks after his uh, partner as well. So uh, um, as far as I remember, we had a few good uh, races together as well. You, you, when you were at Glasgow last year and you, you, you enjoyed a lot of good performances, you seemed to kind of get um, back to the kind of rider that you, you, you could be. Do you feel as though you've managed to take that um, into you the season this year? You know, have you managed to keep that momentum up? 
Yeah, I don't know. You know, <clears throat> for whatever reason, I've, I've last three years I've had pretty good seasons in Denmark, but I've struggled a bit every time I got to got to England. I haven't really been able to to perform on the level I think I, I belong. But um, you know, I started off very slow with Glasgow, but I kept you know trying to find new things, and I knew what I had to to make better to to become a better rider in England. And uh, in the end, it just got easier and easier for me because I obviously got I got into that routine and you know when you feel comfortable with a club and when you feel the people around you are supporting you it, it just makes things so much easier but uh, you know it's it's definitely harder now this year when when you don't have the meetings the extra meetings to to keep you sharp and stuff so uh, yeah. a couple of performances in particular Rennie which uh, I know I'll the majority of Glasgow fans will recall when they think of Rennie back in 2016, where your 14 point returns at Berwick and at your former home track at, at Workington. Um, can you remember those meetings? <laughs> Did they surprise you at the time or you must have been delighted? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, um, obviously, Berwick, I, I, think, I don't think I've ever scored over seven points in the past. You know, so, uh, <laughs> And I went with uh, Ricky to the World Cup the day before, so I didn't really have much sleep. Uh, so to go there and get 15 points was pretty, you know, I still really can't believe how it happened, but uh, that was pretty cool. And, and to get a win for the team was uh, was amazing as well. And, uh, you know, I think with like going to some of your former clubs, it's always nice to go in there and get good scores. And I was lucky enough to have uh, had two strong scores against uh, work on home and away, which, uh, you know, it's always nice. Uh, you know, I, I still have a few good uh, relationships in work and, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's always good to have one on, on top of them. Brilliant, Rennie. They were excellent, excellent performances. When you said, Rennie, at the end of the season, I think it was at the dinner, and you, you mentioned this earlier on as well, that there was only a couple of clubs in, in Britain that you wanted to, to come and ride for. Um, was there any particular reason for that? Are they just uh, tracks that you went well at or you know, a good relationship with the promotion? What was the reasons behind those? I mean, Newcastle, I've always had a good relationship with them. And, you know, obviously I've lived with uh, Alan Hedley, and he's always sponsored me and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, I feel like part of the family when I'm there. So I've always said I want to come back and do a season while he's still the, the promoter there because uh, I feel I need to give him something back for, for all the help he's done to me. And, uh, you know, Newcastle is just a, it's also a nice club and uh, I get on really good with everyone around there. And I think, you know, with, with Glasgow, it's pretty easy, you know, to... The way this, the season ended and, you know, with all the feelings I had about being in that club, the... Uh, it's pretty obviously I wanted to be back there as well. Rene, one heat in particular I wanted to ask you about, and I know we've asked you before about this, but if I mention the playoff semi-final against Sheffield, heat 14, Stuart Dixon told you that you had to win it. Yeah. Can you recall that heat for us? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I still remember he came he came up to me, Stuart, and said, oh, we need this. And I said, just, just shut up now, because I, I know what he needs to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know... To go out, you know, it would have been nice to make the start, but uh, I, I pulled it off in the end, which was really nice. And it's definitely one of them races I'll look back at and be, be proud of, you know. Well, we're glad that you didn't make the start, Rennie, as we can look back on now. Let's relive that Heat 14 right now. So Rene Bach has to win here. And Glasgow get a 5-1 in the final race. It's all going wrong for Glasgow. Here we go with heat number 14 then. Heaps, Cesis and Bach. Rene Bach has to win to keep Glasgow's qualification hopes alive. Away they go. He's made a decent start alongside Arthur Cesis. Cesis up the inside. He takes the lead coming out of turn two. It's Arthur Cesis who's got the lead ahead of Rene Bach. Bach goes to the outside. He's got to throw everything he's got at Arthur Cesis here. He has to win to keep Glasgow's hopes alive. If Sheffield get a heat advantage, they're as good as qualified. Arthur Cesis out in front. Even if Bach wins this, Glasgow have to get a 5-1 to square the tie in the final race. Rene Bach has got to get past. He's got to do the job. He needs to pass Arthur Cecis. He's all over his back wheel. Coming out of turn two. Goes to the outside. Coming into turns three and four. Cecis holds him off. Bach goes to the inside. Gets some lift. One lap to go. Here they come. Into turns one and two. Rene Bach going to the outside. Cuts back down. Oh, cut back down low again. Coming off the turn. He's alongside him. He's up the inside. He's got him going into turn three. Rene Bach takes the lead from Arthur Cecis. He's coming in. He's going to win it. Rene Bach has done it. That's the ride of the season from Rene Bach. Cecis second, third goes to Cameron Heaps. 
the Glasgow fans are going wild in the stands. Rene Bach is their hero. Yeah, Brian, that lives long in the memory, that particular heat, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. I think that's the one outstanding memory people will have of, of Rennie amongst uh, you know several other good ones uh, of the, the cup win, etc. Um, and it's a brave man that tells Stuart Dixon to shut up and still manages to get out on the bike uh, in one piece. So, well done for that, Rennie. Um, you, you said, Rennie, uh, you, you touched on earlier on that you're, you're only racing in Denmark at the moment. What are the prospects um, as we sit at, um, in, in sort of May of you returning to the UK at any point this year? Is there anything you think may be on the horizon? Uh, do you think there's a, a chance that you might return to UK action this year? You never know, you know. Uh, as I said, I've had a few offers, but I also wanted to feel right. And, you know, um, last year when Glasgow rang us, I didn't, I wasn't asking for a UK spot, but it just felt right to do it, you know, and uh, I don't regret it at all. And if the right offer comes up this year, I'll probably jump onto it as well. But, uh, you know, you can look at it in another way. I'll have a very, very low average for next year if, uh, if I don't come over this year, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I definitely want to come back to UK and race for for more than another another season, definitely. Of course, Randy, one rider's good fortune in being called into a team suggests that uh, another rider has had some bad fortune or bad form or perhaps even an injury. But that's the nature of the game, isn't it? And you have got to take these opportunities if if they arise. Yeah, you know, that's good way for you, and uh, you know, every rider know it, it can happen for anyone, and you know. Uh, I think that's one of the things every rider likes as well, you know, you've got to love that pressure you have on and uh, even though sometimes it's not uh, the nicest feeling, but uh, it's why we get up every day and get on our bikes, you know. Well, Randy, listen, thank you for uh, allowing us to cut into your, your evening back home in Denmark. I know you've got some special guests about to ring your front doorbell in the next five minutes or so. So I'll yeah. let you go and we'll let you go off and uh, get ready to receive them. Hopefully, some good fortune will come your way and we will see you racing in the UK and in particular at Ashfield before the season's out. And whether that's for Glasgow or against Glasgow, we would wish you well and uh, warmly receive you back to Ashfield. Rennie, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Brian, Rennie back. Always a delight to, to chat to. And uh, obviously, uh, it seems to be a little bit rusty in terms of his uh, number of meetings he's, he's managed to take part on take part in this year. But interestingly, he still speaks very highly of Glasgow Speedway. He does, yeah. He's such a nice guy, Rennie, and, and it's it's interesting to, to see how much, how closely he still follows the Tigers. Um, for someone who only rode for us for, you know, half a season, he, he, he has a real rapport with the club, and I think the, the fans, you know, had a real rapport with him too. Um, so it's, it's great to hear from him. Good to see him there. You know, doing well. Um, it'd be great to see him back in in the UK at some point. I think that's something we'd all we'd all love to see. Um, hopefully in Tigers colours in the future. You, you never know. Um, I think I think since we actually spoke to Rennie earlier in the week, he's, he's had another Danish meeting. I don't think that quite went so well. If my uh, if my Danish interpretation is, is right um, from from Facebook, uh, I think he'd uh, only scored a few points in, in his latest outing. But um, hopefully, hopefully we'll see Rennie back soon. And I, I know he, he said that he was going to try and. Uh, He's going to try and pop over at some point this season to catch up with us all. So um, hopefully we might see him about Ashfield at some point. Nice to know that we inspired them to greatness <laughs> this week, uh, Brian. <laughs> in, in, in some other uh, some other news, um, fingers crossed as I say these words, but hopefully Nike Luna will make his track return this Saturday night when he competes in the Under-21 uh, World Qualifying Round in Eskilstuna in Sweden. Nike mentioned that to us when, when he be caught with him a couple of weeks ago. So fingers crossed, uh, he, he felt he had a, a good chance to progress from this round and it's his last chance at, at this level. Yeah, I saw the lineup the other day. Um, I think he's got a good chance. I think he is up against guys like Max Frick, which won't be easy. But you know, there's there's four or five sort of familiar names there, and then it gets into you know perhaps guys who are on the continent who aren't quite as well known mm -hmm. to us fans in Britain. Not to say that they're not good riders right enough. So, um, but I know I know like Nike fancies his chances against doing that one, um, and I don't think he's actually managed to yet take part in the full. Um, under twenty one World Series. I might I might be wrong on that, but certainly um, from memory, I don't. I don't recall him having um, done the, f the full campaign as of yet. So um, it'd be great to see him, you know, getting getting that under his belt and hopefully have a, t a shot of the, the podium. So clearly there'll be lots of interest from the west of Scotland, Stuart Dixon included, to uh, see how 
night performs and, and how he comes through that meeting with a view to hopefully making his return for Tigers at Sheffield next Thursday. That's right. I know that's the one that they're targeting. So as long as he comes through unscathed, then there shouldn't be any reason why he's not lining up at, uh, at Tollerton. And I know we, we could certainly do with him. Brian, news of some speed reaction at Ashfield this Sunday. Yep, we don't have a meeting, but we do have a, a practice session, which is uh, going to be taking place um, on Sunday, I believe, between 1 and 5 p.m. Uh, so any any riders who are, are still wishing to take part can uh, get in touch with the, the club via the, the Facebook page. Um, and, you know, if any more details you need, just get in touch through there. I believe that... Uh, Cote Garcia is going to be up for that practice, um, is, is what we've been told, and also potentially a Tiger. Um, we don't have any further news on that, unfortunately, at the moment. But um, a little bit of action to see on Sunday and a good chance to catch up with um, with Cote as well. Excellent. Some other uh, news and a bit of an appeal to some Tiger fans out there. The Tiger's Roadshow, Marketing Roadshow, takes to the road again on successive days. Um, Sunday the 28th of May and Monday the 29th of May on on the Sunday, um, the Tigers Roadshow will be present between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at Allen Glen Sports Complex in Bishop Briggs. And there's a, a little bit of an appeal for any Tigers fans who would like to assist with some, some leafleting on that day. And then the following day, Sunday 29th of May, a bank holiday Monday, the, the Roadshow moves on to Summerlee Heritage Park in Coatbridge. No volunteers required. I've got resources for that day, but uh, between the hours of 11 and 3, Glasgow Speedway again will have a, a marketing presence back in Cope Bridge. Yep, and if you're able to get along to either of those, then then please do so. It'd be great to see some fans getting along to support the club's initiatives and, and great to see them getting out into the community as well. So next week, Brian, you and I will uh, regroup and review, uh, not review, we will preview a couple of uh, big meetings towards the end of, of, of next week. Our trip to Sheffield on Thursday, we hope to have a special guest joining us to preview that meeting and then of course the Tigers make a home return a week on Saturday against Peterborough Panthers which promises to be another entertaining and uh, tough encounter I would suggest. Certainly does yeah, um, it's two, two exciting meetings, uh, one of them away from home of course and hopefully a few fans planning to, to travel down there um, so look forward to, to uh, looking looking at those next week um, and Hopefully we'll have some good news on the, the Nike Luna front as well. Um, but before then, Derek, I believe we've got something um, pretty special lined up this weekend. Yes, you and I are setting our alarm clocks for Sunday morning, Brian, because we're going to bring a, a, a Tiger Bite special this Sunday, where Brian and I will be able to sit down and catch up with a couple of former cult heroes of Glasgow Speedway, none other, all, all the way from sunny Adelaide in Australia. Brian and I will be catching up with the Messiah himself, Shane Parker, previously voted, of course, the number two all-time Tiger when we had that vote back in 2006 or thereabouts. And a buddy of Shane in Adelaide these days, another former Tiger, Cheesecake himself, Robert Chazak, will join Shane and chat to Brian and I about the, the old days. So, uh, Brian, we could do with some uh, help to raise some questions for those guys. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have plenty to ask them about, but um, if you guys want to get involved, please do send us your questions. We'll we'll put a wee thread on the um, on the on the social media pages, and um, please do uh, please do let us know what you want to ask them. And uh, yeah, can't wait for that one. I think that'll be a fantastic chance to catch up with those two guys. Excellent. So join us, folks, on Sunday. We will broadcast not live, but we will we will we will broadcast and publish our catch up with the Messiah and Cheesecake, all the way from Adelaide in sunny Australia. And uh, after that, of course, Brian and I will be back next midweek to preview Tiger's trip to Sheffield and our home meeting against the Panthers. Until then, thank you for joining. Look after yourselves. Good night. Good night.